over the horizon? Well, you shouldn't be. It's a great conference with some fantastic venues. Here are the Horizon League basketball arenas. Wallstein Center, Cleveland State Vikings. We start off with the largest arena in the conference. It doesn't have that big capacity because the Cleveland State basketball team requires it. It certainly doesn't. In fact, I believe about a third of the seating is usually curtained off for Vikings games. But due to the campus's proximity to the city center, the venue can attract some big events. Last year's NBA All-Star Celebrity Game, for instance. Callahan Hall, Detroit Mercy Titans. This is an old school venue with a very simple design both outside and within. However, in its day, it would have been an elite venue. In fact, back in the late 50s, early 60s, it was briefly the home of the Detroit Pistons. Nowadays, they play much closer to the center of town, in what is almost certainly a better venue. However, what this one has over Little Caesars is that there is a dick on the court. A famous dick. Dick Vital. Resch Center, Green Bay Phoenix. Green Bay and Phoenix, an unlikely pairing. This exterior is basically the opposite of the last one. There's more glass than anything else, and I'm not complaining. Another aspect I'm a fan of is the steep bowl seating, which has the dual benefit of a better view for spectators and a more intimidating atmosphere to help the home team. There's not too much else that sets it apart, but that's okay. Indiana Farmers Coliseum, I-U-P-U-I Jaguars. Having opened in 1939, this is the oldest venue in the conference, and the exterior design certainly reflects that fact. There's a bit of art deco going on. It's looking good. This too was home to an NBA team for a brief period, the Pacers. Well, they were an ABA team back then. One downside to its age is the lack of proper retractable seating, which leaves it looking a little bit cluttered behind the baselines, but that is such a small price to pay to play in such a beautiful old building. UW Milwaukee Panther Arena, Milwaukee Panthers. It might not be quite as old as the last one, but it's equally, if not more, iconic, with an equally distinctive exterior. Not to be outdone by the others, this place has actually had two NBA teams that called it home over the years. The Hawks, now based in Atlanta, and the Milwaukee Bucks. Despite the arena now being named after them, the Panthers have only been here on and off since the early 90s. The University of Wisconsin actually pays to have their name on this place, as they don't actually own it. Truest Arena, Northern Kentucky Norse. Speaking of title sponsors, this place has had three different names since it opened, yet the naming rights haven't changed hands. The banks that it's been named after have just kept merging. Personally, I keep all of my money in a special kind of safe called an incinerator. Basically how it works is, it just gets so hot that nobody can possibly steal anything. It's infallible. At least that's what the salesman told me. Anyway, I quite like these scoreboards that combine a modern video board setup with the dot matrix scoreboards above. Athletic Center Arena, Oakland University Golden Grizzlies. I was expecting there to be some sort of Irish connection with a name like Arena, but the O stands for Oakland. I wonder what else they've added an O to. Is the shot clock the shot o'clock? Are the cheerleaders the Cheerios? Is this mascot the O-Beast? Hey! Anyway, that's not the only unusual aspect to this venue. It also has a dark brown court. Oh, and I've just realized the hypocrisy from me given that Australians add O at the end of nearly every word. Right, I mate, I'll meet you at the survey this arvo. Hilliard Gates Sports Centre, Purdue Fort Wayne Mastodon. This is comfortably the smallest arena in the conference, which is ironic given that they have a large mammoth-like creature as their mascot. It's also probably the most simplistic. 
There's no baseline seating and along the sidelines is some fairly standard retractable seating. Not much else to say. UPMC Event Center, Robert Morris Colonials. There are some people out there, perhaps people watching this video, that believe that Earthlings have not yet been to Moon. Well, how do you explain this then? Not only is it the newest venue in the conference, but it's one of the more impressive. Do you think the Moon people could have built this themselves? Do you think the Moon people could comprehend the complexities that go into manufacturing these huge video boards? Granted, the lower gravity would make it easier to install once it's been completed, but I just don't think the Moon people have the resources to begin with. Nice arena. Not a center. Wright State Raiders. In case you were wondering, this place is named after Irvin Nutter, an engineer who donated to the school. And I know what you're thinking. Was he the guy that designed this man-made masterpiece? The Nutter Butter? No, he was not. No one man could. It took a whole team of MIT trained engineers over three years to get the appropriate peanut butter flavor ratio whilst maintaining the structural integrity of the cookie itself. They achieved this feat through rigorous lab testing combined with thousands of mathematical cl calculations that would isolate the dodecahedron drivetrain valve functionary. Beagley Center, Youngstown State Penguins. There's not much going on with this exterior, but inside, this arena is one of a kind. Well, at least relative to this conference. Because over half the capacity is coming from wooden bench seating. I suppose it makes sense that penguins would prefer such a design given that it would be a lot easier to slide across. Also think it looks pretty good when combined with the red seats. So there you have it, time to pick a favorite. For me, it's gotta be Indiana Farmers Coliseum. Mainly for the exterior, but the interior is pretty nice as well. Please consider subscribing if you're new, and as always, thanks for watching, have a good one.